and dudes, welcome to Powerhouse Bakery. I'm so happy to have you here. We are in the middle of warm summer in Texas and nothing better than soup. No, I'm kidding, but this is actually a pretty amazing soup. One that you can serve hot or cold and of course it's super healthy, loaded with amazing color. Look at this beautiful soup. I'm going to show you how to make and it takes about 15 minutes not counting a little chopping, but it's so beautiful. Um, and you know, really what's nice with uh, soup is um, hot or cold, of course, it travels really well. It's great to put in the freezer if you want to, to save for another month or so as the fall rolls in and you feel like having a, a soup. So the name of this soup is the Caribbean Corn Chowder. And it's uh, one of my old family favorites. I've been making this for years. And in fact, I gave away my cookbook that had this original recipe. Um, and so in uh, Powerhouse Bakery pure form, I, I whipped it up by memory and uh, a little bit of palate uh, adjusting. But what's so beautiful about soup is we've got a lot of options. You know, when, when you have such a beautiful creation and it's full of vegetables, you can't go wrong. And one thing that I really love about this time of year is gardens are starting to produce. And so um, one thing that's really easy to grow right now are peppers. In fact, at HEB they're selling peppers, they're selling um, all kinds of fresh herbs. And so if you haven't started your own garden, this is the time to do it. Use it um, a container garden so you can move it if it gets too hot in the, the middle of the day. But uh, this is a really special soup because you can put a lot of extras in it. Uh, Caribbean corn chowder is actually, um, it's been around for a long time and it's one of those recipes that has moved in regions around the world. Um, the one that I originally used was very um, kind of island style. It had a lot, some sweet flavors of pineapple, um, some sweet tarragon, and then you move into the African region and it's a little spicier. So you can absolutely adjust to your palate. And what I did with this one is I started with some peppers from my garden. So I had some Anaheim peppers. I also had some Chipotle peppers, and then I just got some more from HEB. And then if you've been at HEB lately, they are selling uh, fresh ears of corn at a great price. So this is all it is. Now in some Caribbean corn chowder, they also add potato. You could add red potato, sweet potato, russet potato. I didn't add any because I just thought it was so pretty just like this. And another thing you can add to it is a beautiful garnish at the end. So you can add creme fraiche, which gives it a little European flair, or you could add some plain yogurt, which is what I'm doing right here. And then when you swirl it in, it just gives it an extra little cool touch. Here I have some fresh cilantro I'm gonna add in. So just, you know, the eyes eat first. We gotta make it really pretty. And what makes this dish really unique too is some tarragon. And you can grow tarragon, it's absolutely fantastic. So whenever you can, get some of your fresh herbs going in a container garden and you can mix and match as you go with this beautiful corn soup. So let's get started. So yeah, I'm really excited I have this new setup. So I'm gonna get to use this with you. Um, it's called an induction uh, cooktop and it uses special pans. So I had to, oh darn, go buy some really cool, beautiful kitchen equipment. And my, my staff can't use it because it can only be used on this. So it's gonna stay beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like Christmas morning. It's so fun. Um, so in this recipe, we're gonna start with um, some very fun items. Now you could put this in your skillet and saute my first ingredient, or you could roast it. So let me show you what I did. I roasted these beautiful garlic cloves. And so now they're just gonna pop out and I'm gonna put them right into my skillet. So they've already cooked. And look how creamy they are. They just squeeze right out. I'm gonna show you how to do this. And again, you could saute everything in your skillet. Um, these I put in the oven. So let me show you how I did that. And we're gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna start to build our chowder. So on this beautiful cooktop, um, What's really nice is because it's electric, I'm sorry, yeah, electric, but it also is magnetic. That's when you have to use a very special equipment. And so it's super easy to use and it heats up just like a normal uh, cooktop. But I've had a couple people strangely ask me about induction cooking. Um, and so that's why I decided to get it and give it a try. So 
this particular one, you can use um, temperature. So I could set my skillet to 350, or I can do the traditional, you know, high, medium, low, which is um, designated by numbers, so one to 10. So um, I'm gonna put my veggies in here, but I just wanna get it started. And I really don't want my garlic to cook, so I'm gonna move that off the stove in just a second. Let me show you how I set up that beautiful garlic. So if you're gonna put it in the oven, you want to get a little roaster if you can. Um, a garlic roaster is basically a ceramic dish that you can put the, the garlic in. And what I'm gonna do is cut off the tops and I'm gonna pour a little bit of olive oil right in there and it's just gonna bake in its own skin. So the trick is you don't wanna take all the peel off. You wanna make sure that you have some of that peel left. So let me show you. Nice sharp knife, gonna go right across. So look how I've kind of opened up all of those little cloves. See this one I kind of missed? So I'm just gonna cut a little section right off of that. Now I can get into all of those cute little holes. And I'm gonna put in, now you can use a dish if you want, or like I did, right into foil. Super easy, you can fold it in, put your uh, olive oil around it, and it'll be so easy to prepare. Let me show you. Don't put too much oil in either, just enough to drizzle it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit around it. So again, you could use a special garlic roaster or just some foil. And I'm just gonna pull all that together and that's gonna go into the oven. And it turns out just like that, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna put this off to the side because now I wanna build my meal in the skillet. So with the Caribbean corn chowder, the first thing we're gonna do is have beautiful peppers. Let me show you what I've got here. So again, these are just out of my uh, garden. Um, yellow, you could do red. I did some red already cut up for us, but you could do um, different colors. If you wanna go a little hot, you could add some jalapeno, serrano. You could of course add the favorite poblano. So the recipe that I'm gonna share with you calls for four cups of a uh, variety of colors of peppers. And so, what I've done is already chopped them. And I put them in order because I wanna make sure that the ones that cook, um, that need a little more cooking are gonna go into the skillet first. And I'm just gonna let them sit there and sizzle and so that they'll gradually get cooked. The ones down at the bottom, um, the yellow peppers take a little less cooking time. And so whenever you set up your mise en place, the things that take the most cooking go on the top. So the things that take the least cooking go into your container first. So whenever I did the stir fry, if you saw that a while ago, I set up my uh, container that same way. And that just helps you to make sure that as you're loading in your skillet, things are in place. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my beautiful cooktop here. I'm gonna go to medium high, and I'm gonna let my skillet get hot. So see, it's, you, I can tell it's not hot yet because I didn't get any sizzle. So I'm gonna leave it there for another minute or two as it heats up. heats up, I'm going to show you how to milk your corn. Yes, I said milk. Is that not crazy? Um, so much comes from corn. And sadly, we do kind of abuse our corn and, you know, we're cooking it um, now, but, you know, so often in, in the days gone by, um, we could roast corn. And of course we can still, but it's become less popular because people are worried that corn is uh, a genetically modified crop. So all the more reason to see if you can grow your own. Uh, one of my wonderful clients has grown her own and it's absolutely gorgeous. So it can absolutely be done. But truth be told, I did not grow any corn this time. I bought it from HEB. And so I'm gonna show you how to husk it and then we're gonna cut off the kernels and we're gonna be able to do all of this and put it into our Caribbean corn chowder. It really doesn't cook more than about 12, maybe 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm getting a little sizzle going, which is what I like. And now I'm gonna add in my two and a half tablespoons of olive oil. You could use sesame oil too, if you wanted to. And I'm gonna put in my uh, toughest peppers first. A little bit of the red. I'm just gonna let them sit there a little bit. And I'm gonna put in some onion. So this is when your family goes, hey, what are you cooking? It smells wonderful. They wanna come in and help. 
And so that's when you encourage them to come help you, because that's the way to do it. Cook as a family. Let me show you how to do the corn. You are going to have to have a pretty sharp knife. Um, again, I, I have a, a Hinkle's brand, and so I'd like to show you some equipment um, that are sort of the tools of the trade, if you will. Getting a really good quality knife is so important. You want to get one that fits your hand. You want to get one that's of, um, about one and a half times your fist size. So if you're a big person and you want a big knife, go for it. But for the most part, it's just about eight inches. So the eight inch chef's knife is your all around perfect knife. Get one that is easy to sharpen and learn how to sharpen it when you buy it. Super important. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna cut off the kernel. So notice I'm holding that knife really straight and I'm going down, just getting the tops of the kernels off. I can probably put it in my container too. So I'm holding the, the, the corn at an angle and I'm just cutting straight down. So I'm going to go all around one half and then I'll flip it over and do the other half. So just let them fall into the hole. And even if they're on your cutting board, they don't go too far. Just make sure you can keep them all contained. So I don't want to cut across that too much, because now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the dull side of my knife, and I'm going to get all that juice out of the corn. That's what makes this really a fabulous dish. So, so much comes from corn. You know, we get corn oil, we get corn syrup. Corn syrup is actually from this corn. It's hard to imagine, but these beautiful sugars that come from the carbohydrate are cooked down enough that it actually turns into a syrup. So so much we can do with the corn. And in the old days, corn was a great way to sweeten it. Now we think of it as a starch that we're supposed to stay away from. Um, maybe someday when we improve how we grow our corn, we can go back to really enjoying all the qualities, the, the corn oil and the corn sweetener, and of course the vegetable. Complex carbohydrate is still corn. So it's giving us lots of great energy, and if we get a good quality grower that doesn't use pesticides, then we are in luck, and we can really enjoy corn again. Okay, so look at all that wonderful moisture that I'm getting from the corn. So it adds a great element of sweetness, and it gives you just a wonderful little bit of crunchiness for that Caribbean corn chowder. See, yeah, I love it. I'm gonna do one more. And so I've gotten pretty much everything out of that corn cob. Don't want to waste anything. So whenever you're grabbing um, your vegetables off your cutting board, make sure you use the dull side of your knife and it becomes a great scraper. You don't need to buy an extra tool. You got one right there. So I'm going to show you how we husk. So you want to hold it from the top to the bottom, divide the hair in half, and then pull straight down comes right off. So now I'm just going to separate the two sides. And don't worry about all the silk. It's going to come with it. So as long as you get it started and get a good handle on it, all of the rest comes straight down. Pretty easy. And then right at the end, I'm just going to break it off. And there we go. There's going to be a little bit of silk left, but not much. I know at ATB they leave the, the big garbage pail for you to do it there, but honestly, it's better if you can Peel your um, the husk off just before you use it because it will definitely keep it from drying out. See how beautiful that looks? So now I can get two more corn um, servings out of this. So I'm going to go straight down about really toward it. That means it's a nice fresh one, right? Beautiful. So again, I'm just putting the tops off, going straight down, my knife at an angle. And then I can flip it over and do the other side. And my peppers are doing beautifully. If only you could smell them. This is what we poured in. All right, and then I'm going to take the dull side of the knife or the back side and get all the milk out. So if your corn is a fairly medium or small size uh, cob like this one, you'll want to do at least three, maybe even four, in order to get this beautiful soup. But this one is giving away so much juice. Look at that. So pretty. Now this um, particular soup does use uh, a vegetable broth 
you can absolutely buy a vegetable broth. I'm going to show you though what I did for mine. I, I did make a homemade vegetable broth and it, it's just nice because you can add in your own flavors. Um, you can make it a little more spicy or you can make it very soft. Um, in general, a vegetable broth just needs some celery, some onion, maybe some herbs, and good quality water. And you'll just let them cook down and then you can strain it or you can leave all the little parts in there. Okay, so there, that's pretty much all of that corn cob. Look how pretty that is. So it's very moist. That last one was squirting me. It had a lot of juice to give up. So that's a really, really nice one. Okay, so now let's see how our peppers are going. Oh, I love it. See how they're getting a little bit brown? I love that. That gives you extra flavor. That browning reaction is where the trick is. You definitely don't want to stir too much. Right when you put the veggies in the skillet, because you want them to get a little bit of that brown color. Just a little bit. So I added about two, maybe three tablespoons of olive oil and my veggies are going. Now I'm going to put the rest of those um, little more delicate ones in because it's nice to have a little texture in this soup. We don't want them to all be too soft. So I'm, I think I have enough just like that. So the bright yellows, and you know the eyes eat first, so we definitely want to get some beautiful colors in there. Now I'm not going to put my roasted garlic in there just yet. Remember, it's already cooked. So I'm just going to let those peppers cook down a little bit more. It's almost ready for my broth also. I'm going to show you how I make that broth, and then we'll add it in in just about two minutes. A little bit of fresh ground pepper. Definitely get a good quality pepper and salt grinder. You want one that you can easily add. Remember, I love to add different kinds of uh, kernels into the pepper grinder. And you can even get one with salt. So don't be afraid to tell the or ask the uh, vendor that you, if you can try your pepper and salt grinder before you buy it. Because sometimes they're not made well and you don't want to get home and they be disappointed that it's not working well. Yeah, that was beautiful. Okay, let's put the lid on it. And we're going to let that cook down a little bit more. And in about two minutes, I'm going to put my broth in there. And then it will continue to cook and soften those peppers. And then the corn will go in in a couple more minutes. And this is going to be so beautiful. Um, so there is going to be a dairy um, alternative to the soup. Uh, back in the day, I did use milk, but now I'm finding that there's so many other great options. We don't really need milk. And um, I think I've talked to you guys before about hemp milk, and that's one of my absolute favorites. It's loaded with uh, essential fats. Being dairy-free means that it's low allergen, so it's a really great one. Let me show you. So this is the one that I use. Um, Look for uh, unsweetened, original. Uh, if you get the vanilla one, it would work, but it's just going to give it a little bit, maybe more sweetness than you want. And so there's going to be uh, one cup of this milk in our Caribbean corn chowder, as well as some of the broth. And remember, you don't have to use hemp. You could use almond if you prefer. So lots of options there. I'm going to give it a little shake, and we're going to add in one cup. Let it continue cooking just a little bit more. Let me show you how I do that broth. There we go. Perfect. So again, I have my heat on medium, medium high. So on a scale of one to 10 on my particular burner, I'm at a seven and a half. So I call that medium high. Let me show you my broth. So in this broth, I've got about, oh, maybe three stalks of celery. Um, I had some pe bell peppers that were getting kind of old. Still perfectly good, just not as pretty as some. And um, then I also added in uh, one slice of lemon. I added some cilantro, and then I added some seeds. Uh, coriander, a little bit of dill, a little bit of fennel. And that way, there's, got, there's some beautiful flavors in there. Oh, and of course, Thank you, Judy, I love you. She gives us bay leaves all the time, and I put that in all of my broth bases. So that is a beautiful base. And so having this handy, uh, no meat at all, but keep it in your fridge, and you can keep all those vegetable parts in there. And then when you're ready, just pull some out. You can strain it or not. And like I said, sometimes having 
that little bit of extra stuff in there is just bonus. Um, so I'm going to pull out a little bit. So that's about a cup. I'm going to add it to our corn chowder. Yeah, that looks gorgeous. I'm going to bring, come back to a boil, and we're almost ready to put our corn in there. So one thing that I love about Caribbean corn chowder too is um, almost every um, region still does use tarragon. And you could use fresh or you could use the dried. Um, this is all I had for today, but I do sometimes have fresh in my garden. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that in. So I, on your recipe, I think I had one teaspoon. Um, but again, you can adjust it. And I've already salted, and so I'm not gonna salt any more until it goes to the table so that my guests can salt according to their own palate. Um, it's just now starting to boil, so I want to show you how pretty it looks. We've got a couple more add-ins. I haven't forgotten the garlic that we did that beautiful roast, and you see some turmeric down there. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh turmeric. So look at this, these beautiful little roots. They are not very pretty, but when we cut them, they are gorgeous inside. Let me show you. And you can just slice them, you can shred them. There's lots of ways to put this beautiful turmeric in. Um, honestly, I prefer to use the real root rather than the powder. We can use the powdered turmeric, but this is super fresh. So I'm going to do very thin slices and put them right into my corn chowder. They kind of look like a carrot. Of course, they're a little stronger than a carrot, but they're really wonderful. So just a rough chop. And in they go. Another thing I love about good cooking um, equipment is you want to be able to look in your uh, skillet when you're cooking. So try hard to find something that has a glass top or you know a, a plastic top that you can see through. It always helps me because when I see the bubbles, I kind of know where the cooking process is. Super important. Now we've got our beautiful garlic. This is going to go in. Now I'm just going to mash it a little bit. Remember, it was really soft when I put it in. I really wanted to show you in the in the open skillet so you can see how pretty it is. And I'm just going to press it in there. This is looking gorgeous. Now you could absolutely process this in a food processor and make it even smaller chunks. Um, we did probably chop this a little bigger than um, I might have if I was serving it, um, you know, to a family with kids. But if you blenderize them. You don't blenderize the whole soup, just blenderize maybe a third of it, so you still have some beautiful chunks, because if you blenderize it all, it could turn kind of ugly color, so we don't want that. Okay, let's put this beautiful corn in. All that wonderful corn milk is in there. And this is where we might decide we want to adjust our liquids a little bit, because I didn't quite put in all of my broth. I always want to see how it's going to end up. I love the colors. You can really see those darker peppers popping through. Yep, I'm going to add probably another third of a cup of my unsweetened hemp milk. You could also use a can of coconut milk. Uh, in the displayed one, that's what I use, and it's so good that way. It's again a little richer, probably a little more calories, but oh so good. There you are. That is our Caribbean corn chowder. Absolutely gorgeous ready to go. If we wanted to, we could add some potatoes, but other than that, we don't need much more. All right? So as soon as you're ready, come visit me at Powerhouse Bakery, and I will share some Caribbean corn chowder. Let me know what you end up doing with yours, and maybe some of the specialty peppers that you use, or if you decide to use a different um, type of the, the milk replacement. So I hope you love it, and stay cool this summer.